So anyways, it's got a nice sunroof over here, pretty good size sunroof, almost stretches all the way the width of the car. It's also got a sunglass holder right over here. I got sunglasses in here right now. The lights in here are not LED, they're incandescent. Um, both of them over there. And you got two more in the back over there. And what's cool about this car is you can have a heads up display right in front of you. I go ahead and put my foot on the brake pedal over here and I go ahead and push the uh, start button on the car. And what you'll notice, because this has memory seats and I have um, set up in the infotainment system in the settings of the vehicle to move the seat back to allow easy entry and exit of the car, you'll notice my seat move forward a little bit. So watch this. Boom, it moved me up just a, just enough to bring me closer to my set position. It's really cool, it makes you feel a little bit more luxurious. I swear, this, this Honda badge almost feels misplaced. I'll show you the heads up display. So what's cool over here on the heads up display is you can see, so first of all, you can see the speed limit and whenever I drive past a, um, uh, it has road sign detection with the cameras up up there behind the behind my dash cam it's got cameras in the car basically telling you uh, whatever the speed limit is and it will not only show up right on the heads-up display right above the zero mile per hour that I'm going it'll actually show down over here too above the park above the P so what's cool about that is hey you'll always know what the speed limit is and it's not GPS it literally reads the road sign also ACC and LKAS, that's the Adaptive Cruise Control and Lane Keep Assist. This does not have a traditional shifter. It's got buttons, very, very similar to the Acura TLX. So I'll go ahead and put it in drive. It's got an electronic parking brake, so I'll go ahead and push that down there. This is the backup camera. You have three different views. You have a wide angle view. You have a little bit more of a traditional view and you have a top-down view as well. So anyways, about the ACC and LKAS, what'll happen is there'll be a car graphic that shows and then bars that kind of show the distance between you and the car and each bar um, signifies a car length in its value. Okay. So, now that we're situated, what I wanted to note is uh, obviously since this is the top level trim, it has a really nice Garmin based navigation here. Basically half from about here where my hand is all the way to the left side. It is all LCD. Pretty much everything is LCD except for the analog miles per hour gauge. So what I'll go ahead and do is put my foot on the brake and go ahead and put it in drive and you'll I don't know if you can actually see here where my hand is, but down here, there's no traditional sit shifter. So like I showed you earlier, there it is, I go ahead and put it in drive. And uh, this car does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It has a really, really cool menu system here. I find it to be super, super fluid. It's, it's tablet style. I like how it's kind of in my peripheral on my level. It's not down here or anything like that. Uh, this is also an electrochromatic uh, rear view mirror with home link so you can program these little buttons over here for any garage door. Uh, this button over here with the green, I don't know if you can see that in the video, but essentially what this does is turn this um, uh, auto dimming. So if somebody has super bright headlights in the back, it's not going to blind me with the rear view mirror over here. So. Anyways, now that it's in drive and I'm in normal mode, so you have Econ, Sport, or you can just drive it in normal. So I have Eco and Sport turned off. So we're gonna go ahead and go for our drive here. So this car, like I said, really surprises me. I really enjoy it. Again, from an owner's perspective, you really can't go wrong with this car. I, I do think that there are a lot of people who um, you know may think I'm crazy for jumping into a Honda Accord from uh, a 2015 Tesla Model S uh, 85D. But you know, honestly, I, I don't regret my decision. I, I do think that um, this car has a lot of perks uh, over the Tesla 
and really the biggest perk that I would say that this car has is, is the fact that this is the 10th generation. Uh, we're sitting in the 10th generation Honda Accord. It's a 2018. 10th generation means what? It means that they've been doing this for 40 years, 40 plus years. So I have a lot of faith coming into this car and, and expecting that I'm gonna get good quality. So I, I do think that Tesla will have their day in the sun, but they need to prove that they're that they're more reliable and they're a more trustworthy car maker. The fact that it took over three months to get my car back uh, after the accident is is insane. But anyways, let's get back to this car. So this car has a lot of great features. The Honda Accord has a lot of great features. Obviously, it's got heated and cooled seats. It has a um, obviously a heads-up display like I showed you earlier. It has adaptive cruise control. It's got amazing navigation. Um, Garmin-based navigation is fantastic. Garmin, to me, is like the Cadillac of, of navigation. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's got a lot of pluses. Well, look at this car. It's got a lot of pluses to it that I uh, really appreciate. Uh, ignore this traffic here. It's it's unusual. There must be something going on over there with the with the police lights So we're actually about to take this on the highway and I'm gonna show you this car has got a ton of pickup um, It's very very quick. What I really enjoy about this car is there's very 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 little um, Oversteer or understeer it, it really handles well in the corners like right now going on this um uh, curve here to merge onto the highway. It is really impressive how well this car uh, drives. I'm very, very impressed. Um, it's got a lot of pickup. Like right now, we're merging onto the highway. It's got a ton of pickup. The exhaust note is nice. I do think a little bit of it is kind of fake that it's being pumped through the uh, speakers in the car, but it's still really impressive. The reason why I said that this car reminds me of my 2012 TL, the TL was very sporty when you wanted it to be, yet it was very refined when you wanted it to be in terms of just a comfy, cushy ride. All I have to do is go ahead and hit Eco, and what happens here on the, uh, on the display is it kind of softens everything up. It softens up the throttle response. It softens up the steering, in my opinion. Now, maybe I'm crazy, but I, I, I believe that. And it, it, it kind of makes it a little bit more of, a, of an economical uh, car in the moment, right? Then, if I go ahead and push the button right next to Eco, the sport button, this car, if you can tell, I'm not sure if you can, but there's a little bit of red uh, over here on the gauge cluster, and it just makes the car a little more torquey. It, it also has adaptive uh, dampeners, which essentially kind of harshens up the suspension a little bit more to kind of give you that more like racy feel where you can really feel the road. And, and it really is something that I really enjoy because this car is multi-faceted. Now that we're on the highway, I'm gonna get away from this wall over here on the right side. They're doing a lot of construction on 66. So <clears throat> I'm gonna take it off of sport mode, put it into normal mode. Oh, and in sport mode, uh, all, obviously the, the RPM gauge kind of changes up a little bit. It also shows you a little boost gauge. Shows you your boost, it's, it's kind of cool. So anyways, now that we're on the highway, I'll go ahead and hit the uh, set button here on the steering wheel. And I was wrong. You can set it a maximum of four car lengths. And I put it to 60 miles an hour. You obviously can't see that on the heads up display, but it literally shows like right there on the heads up display. And I'll go ahead and hit the steering wheel over here. And now that it's kind of assisting me with the steering. And if you hear like a little audible beep, that's because it's, it's stopped assisting me with the steering because I put on my turn signal. But yeah, 
I mean, this car pretty much steers for you. Like, both of my hands are right here, and it's, it's doing a pretty good job of, of, of steering for me. And there's cars all around me. But every now and again, you gotta got to touch the steering wheel because, you know, it's, it's not going to steer for you as long as the Tesla will. I think I've counted it. It's about 50 seconds, and then it'll kind of nag you to go ahead and touch the steering wheel. And see, we're going under... 40 miles an hour now, bam, it just kicked off. So it's got a little bit of a grace in terms of how long it will steer for you. Once I hit 46 miles an hour again, bam, it picks up the steering wheel. And once I drop below 46, once I hit 40 going back down, then it'll kick off. So you have to be going at least 46 miles an hour for the steering to engage, the steering assist to engage, and once you drop below 40 miles an hour, it disengages. I hope that makes sense. It does a really good job of, of really just kind of making the long trips easier. I, I definitely enjoy that and I appreciate that a lot. There is a lot of traffic today. It's weird. It's 6.36 on a Saturday. Anyways, um, so this car, like I said, um, impresses me every single time I drive it. I love it. It's fast as hell. And that whole thing about the tuning and the ECU, I mean, honestly, it's not like it needs it. I just want it. <laughs> um, again, you know, I, I wouldn't cry without it. I'm turning off everything now. Anyways, I'm taking full control of the car now. I wouldn't cry without the um, uh, without the tune, but I would enjoy it just because you know coming from a Tesla to this car, I mean there's definitely speed loss. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This car is definitely slower than the Tesla, but if I get it tuned, it definitely closes that gap a lot. The one downside to this car is, is it being so powerful with that tune is uh, uh, all that power going to the front wheels. I'm not sure how much wheel spin I'm gonna get. But in terms of the power it has now, and if I were to floor it in sport mode, there's very little torque steer, um, very little. And, and I definitely, I don't know how the heck Honda did it. They made it very smooth, very smooth. The shifting is very smooth. I also forgot to mention this car has paddle shifters as well. Um, this car definitely, I mean, it's, in my opinion, it's got a flavor for everyone. Now, I hear that most people are going to opt for the uh, CVT, which I have never driven the CVT. Um, I went into this car, I test drove this car, and I ended up walking away with this car. But um, the CVT, uh, you know, I'm sure it'll be great. Uh, it's got 192 horsepower and I think 190 some odd foot pounds of torque. Um, obviously this is significantly faster. This car with this transmission is very sporty. I cannot speak for the CVT. Uh, this car looks very luxurious. Um, as you can tell, things are fantastic. I have a brake hold button over here. And I don't know if you just saw it said brake hold system engaged on the left side of my gauge cluster. And my feet are off the pedal now. I'm, we're at a red light and we're not moving. And it's fantastic. The sound system in this car is good. Uh, I think it's 450 watt Honda branded. They just say premium sound system. I use air quotes because I don't know what that means. Uh, it's not branded by Bose or JBL or anything like that. So I don't know what premium means, but it sounds really good. I'm, I'm very impressed with the sound and the sound system. And, and you know, uh, the adaptive cruise control with low speed follow, that's the official terminology from, from Honda, it does a really good job. So right now I'm going to go ahead and set it and I'm going to make it for two car lengths and I'm going to set it to 40 miles an hour. It just picked up the speed limit sign on the right side over here that I'm going 40 miles an hour. And um, it, 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 you know, it literally comes to a stop for you. I'm, I'm not pushing anything. It's coming to a complete stop. And it's, it does a great job. I, I, I cannot complain. The one thing I wish this car would do is steer for you to a complete stop. 
I hate the fact that I have to go above 46 miles an hour in order for the steering to, to engage. Now, I am not an advocate for not paying attention when you're driving, but come on, Honda. Just give me something. Like, I drove a Nissan Leaf, that'll steer for you to a complete stop and brake for you to at a complete, you know, to a complete stop and then accelerate again if the car in front of you moves within five seconds. That five second mark is the key. Without that, you have to resume it on your own. The only car that I have personally driven and know for a fact that it will, um, uh, you don't have to press resume or anything like that is the Tesla Model S. In my Tesla Model S, I never once had to hit resume or tell the car, hey, keep moving um, after we've been stopped for longer than five seconds. So every other car, I kind of have that expectation, including the Mercedes E-Class that I was interested in, but I ended up getting this Honda instead. Um, you still had to hit resume. So we're coming to a complete stop again. And again, it, it really does a good job coming to a complete stop. I still do have to steer. The steering wheel feels fantastic. Um, I, I cannot complain. I definitely think they did an excellent job with the uh, with the steering. I'm recording this now on my iPhone, and you can kind of see here that I have my heads up display there, and I've set it to two part lengths. I don't know if you can see the speed limit there. I've, it's uh, 40 miles an hour. Right? I've set the speed to 45, it sees the car in front of me and it's going to help me brake. Um, I think it does uh, an excellent job at, at the mitigation in traffic here. Definitely appreciate it a lot. Sorry for the shakiness of the camera, i got a lot going on right now. But I am steering myself. Now it sees no car in front of me, that's why you see it kind of outlined there with no car in the middle. This car has full-blown blind spot monitoring. If I wanna put on my signal right now and there's a car in my blind spot, an orange light will appear on the top right corner of my right side mirror and the top left corner of my left side mirror. And um, it'll actually start beeping at me, it's cool. This car also has parking sensors on it when you put it in reverse. It does not have a 360 camera, but it has parking sensors pretty similar to the Tesla. So the Tesla's parking sensors would actually tell you how far you are from an object. This car doesn't do that, but it has dashes. So when you're uh, yellow, you're kind of close. When you're orange, you're a little bit closer. And then when you're red, you're very, very close. And it'll start beeping at you like crazy when you're close to something. You can turn it off in the bottom left corner, um, right underneath the heads up display and the trip buttons. Uh, towards the left of your uh, uh, steering wheel. But the point is, is this car has that and it's really, really good. I like it a lot, but it is annoying in drive throughs so That's the one thing you gotta keep in mind. So as I'm getting to a point now where I can go ahead and get out of this car and show you the Honda Link app, um, you know, I, I, I again wanna tell all, all of you that I encourage anybody who is interested in buying a car, this car um, as, you know, optioned, uh, the highest trim is $36,650. In my opinion, it's worth every penny. Uh, I think this is a perfect car for enthusiasts. I mean, obviously you can get a, you can get a stick shift um, version of this car uh, with a six speed manual with, with that 2.0 um, turbo engine. But uh, I think this car is great for enthusiasts. I think this car is great for people who want a luxury feel but not a luxury bill. For this money, I could have gotten a Mercedes-Benz CLA, I could have gotten a UC class, I could have gotten a lot of cars, but the reason why I went with this is because I had such a bad experience with a car that 
I expected a lot from. I wanted something that was nice you know, it was fast and it was low maintenance. And I was thinking about going for an Acura, but once I got in this car, I saw the heads up display. I saw a lot of different options. It really made me fall in love with this car, especially at this price tag. Now with the Acura, you know, I wanted to get the super handling all wheel drive. I think the styling of the Acura is definitely better than this car, but with what you're getting in this car, you're definitely getting a lot more than what you paid for. And uh, I definitely appreciate it a lot. You know, I actually don't know if the Acura TLX has a heads up display. I, I have no idea. I know that there were some options in the TLX that didn't even have remote start on the, on the remote. This, the, the, the key fob for this car has remote start and you can remote start it from the Honda Link app. You can also lock the car and do a lot of other things with the Honda Link app. Now, keep in mind, it's a paid subscription but they give you three months of it for free. It's pretty cool. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but this thing's got an amazing exhaust note. And that was just in normal mode. I wasn't in sport mode or anything like that. Another thing to note, like I said earlier, it's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Once I go ahead and connect my phone like that, You'll notice that the display over here will change once I hit home. And I hit Apple CarPlay over here. And so this is, you know, the traditional Apple Maps over here. Um, you can hit the home button over here and press Google Maps. So this is Google Maps now. And I like the fact that it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You know, honestly, um, when I was uh, looking at cars, I was very impressed with the Toyota Camry. I think the 2018 Toyota Camry XSE is very, very impressive, especially with the white, the panoramic, the white color uh, paint, the panoramic sunroof, and the red leather. Oh, that's an amazing car. Three things missing from that car, in my opinion, from what I was looking for. First, it didn't have memory seats. I don't understand how the hell that's possible. <laughs> uh, you're paying $38,000 for a car. Where the hell are the memory seats? This car has memory seats, and this car is cheaper than that car. One. Two, this car, the Honda Accord, does a much better job of the semi-autonomous driving than the Camry ever would. And three, I was very confused as to why Toyota did not put Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in it. I do think the Camry styling is very nice. However, I think the Camry might be a little bit over styled and I'm not sure how it'll age. I know this car is definitely a little more toned down and I think that this car will age a little bit better. Again, that's my opinion. So I'm gonna show you something that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the car off. So I wanna give you guys a quick shot of the steering wheel over here. This is the um, adaptive cruise control. This is the lane keep assist. This is how you set, resume. Um, this is a turn off the entire system or not. This is the heads up display. You can I toggle, I think, between like three different settings. Uh, volume up, down, track skip. Um, this is the home. This kind of controls the LCD on the left side. Again, you see all this stuff in the uh, in this, in other reviews. This is just an owner's perspective. That's the parking sensor right here. And this is like, uh, almost like all your safety features, engaged or not. So, I want to show you something cool, this little party trick. So, earlier, I showed you a pretty cool party trick. Close the door. The car beeps once to signify that all the doors are closed. I walk away, boom, it locks. Now, over here in the Honda Link app, it's pretty cool. So, you see the Honda Accord over here, it shows me my range. I have 108 miles left on the tank. Uh, start engine, turn off the engine. So this car has an AT&T um, hotspot on it. So it takes a little bit of time, but now it says the car is locked. I can lock or unlock it. The one thing I cannot do with this car is I cannot drive it without the key fob. But I can lock, unlock it, and start it from my phone. As long as I have internet connection on my phone, I can do all that stuff. It's pretty cool. So watch this. I'm going to go ahead and hit start engine. There's a pin I have to type in. Once I type in the pin, you see the screen there. And now, 
you got three dots over here kind of toggling and give it a second here boom car just started up I don't have to use my key fob because with your key fob you have to use it within I think a hundred feet or 200 feet basically within line of sight of the car this I can start this up from my desk at work and it will start my car up on a hot day or a cold day and of course it will turn on the AC on a hot day and turn on the heat on a cold day and what I noticed it actually turns on the heated seats on a cold day as well I find that to be really cool so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you have any comments uh, or suggestions just go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to it as quick as I can and one last thing on the note of the app it tells me the in-car temperature that's pretty freaking cool and I can turn off the engine right now uh, also it tells me where the car is located I can actually send um, an address to the car's GPS as soon as I get in the car the car will say would you like me to take you to this destination I go ahead and hit OK and BAM it has it ready to go in the Garmin based navigation system of the car I'm really digging this car I love it a lot I, I hope that I did a good job giving you an owner's perspective I know I kind of sprinkled in a little bit of my thoughts between going from a Tesla to coming to this car but I wanted to give you the guys the whole story and I don't think that there are too many people that go from a Tesla to an Accord but uh, <laughs> I love this car this Again, this is the uh, 2018 Honda Accord 2.0 Turbo Touring. I'm going to give you one more shot, kind of going around the car here. I love this car. If you guys have any uh, questions, uh, leave a comment down below. Peace.